From calorie counts to portion sizes, we wanted to find the differences between MREs and ration packs in the US and the UK. This is Food Wars. A US MRE is manufactured and packaged by Warnick, Ameriqual, and Sopaco, uh, and come in one standard pack size. UK MREs, or ration packs as we call them, are produced by Vesti Foods and come in three portion sizes. The standard portion is this, a 24-hour ration pack. You can also get a smaller version, which is a 12-hour ration pack. And our biggest portion is this. This is a 10-man operational pack, which contains 10 of these 24-hour ration packs. According to the Defense Logistics Agency website, a case of MREs, which is 12 meals, weighs around 22 pounds or 9.98 kilograms. So on average, one meal would be roughly 831.6 grams. The approximate weight of one of these ration packs is 1.75 kilograms, but we're gonna weigh it to see if that's accurate. So the weight of our 24 hour ration pack here in the UK was actually 1.49 kilograms. This is a bit lower than the promised 1.75. I don't know if you're a soldier in the field, if this is actually a positive thing because you've got less weight to carry, or if you're actually getting slightly less food than you were promised. In the UK, our ration pack menu number two contains a chili con carne. We're gonna compare ours to the American chili to see who's getting more. I do think I've lost a little bit in here. And if I were eating this straight out of the packet, maybe tearing the packet open, getting better access, I could probably get that closer to uh, the 300 mark. So here are the contents of a 24 hour ration pack in the UK. In total, we counted 29 edible items, as well as a few extra bits, including tissues, sanitary wipes, matches, and other stuff like that. We counted 11 edible items in our US ration pack. Here are all the military MREs for the US not available in the UK. And here are all the ration packs in the UK that you can't find in the US. There's actually very few overlap of specific meals in US MREs and the UK ration packs. Also, depending on which MRE meal you get, uh, they contain different combinations of snacks and sides. In both countries, official MREs are not available for sale directly to consumers. Basically, when you get a ration pack in the UK, it will come with a corresponding menu number. The menu number will give you a rough indication of what you're gonna find inside, although there is a bit of variation. So what we've done here is lay out the breakfast and the main course options in order of the menus. In the UK, we were currently able to get hold of menus one to 10. All right, we got the US MREs. I think we got every menu one through 24. We're gonna go through the entrees and the breakfasts now. I wanna point out that for the US MREs, not every single one came with a definitive breakfast. And some of them just had something that was fruit or fruit related, which we assume was supposed to be eaten first thing in the morning. Now, all of these can be eaten either hot or cold. I guess ideally you'd have them heated up. We actually got sent this flameless heating bag. Instructions for use. This is either gonna go really well, or I'm gonna give myself and the Food Wars table some chemical burns. I'm gonna do a chili because we've already got a chili open and I kinda know what they taste like. Filter line only. And then leave that for 10 minutes. Oh. Well, it works. <laughs> I hope I've sealed that well enough because that steamed up very quickly there. So while that does its thing, I guess all that remains is for me to try the rest of them. Starting down here, remember our good friend, the chili? Not bad. I would say as average as chili can be. I think honestly, I've never been in the military. I haven't done any service, but I used to camp a lot when I was a kid. And I do remember going on like sometimes two, three week long canoe trips in Canada. Couple days in, this is like gourmet. You know what I'm talking about. Like your standards change quickly when you're outside all day. It comes with a cornbread. This cornbread muffin's actually really good. Let's try it with the chili. So the breakfast that we got for menu one was pork, sausage, and beans in a tomato sauce. This is like kind of an iconic British meal, I can't lie. It's kind of good. <laughs> We're starting off strong. I like that. Next up, we have a pindi chana aloo, which seems to be like a potato and chickpea curry. And then the final option from menu one in the UK, meatballs and pasta. Do I have high or low expectations for meatballs and pasta? Yeah, I mean, I think my fear was that like pasta doesn't hold up very well when it's kind of submerged in a sauce and cooked for a while. And I think that's kind of come true. Meatballs are right though. Menu number two is shredded beef and barbecue sauce, but also came with seasoned black beans and tortillas. So, I mean, I don't know how you would do this out in the field with no plates and not a table. And then the beans, a uh, military taco. Here we go. These beans are rock solid. The consistency is a little weird. And this one is the chicken and noodles with vegetables and sauce. Yeah, this, 
This looks like uh, like a can of like chunky soup or chunky stew before you heat it up. This definitely should be heated up before. And this, oh my God, this is brutal. If you had this and you couldn't heat it up for some reason, this is very bad. The first potential breakfast, the applesauce with raspberry puree. Now we're talking here. Oh my God, that does not taste like fruit. That tastes like pure sugar. There is fruit in it, but it tastes more like, like uh, fruit flavored soda. This will definitely wake you up in the morning. Then we're on to menu two, and the breakfast is a raspberry muesli with milk. Now it says with milk, but there is no liquid in here. So I think what they've done is actually put powdered milk in here and you add some water and then hopefully that kind of turns into something resembling milk. It looks very uh, chalky and powdery at the moment without the water in it. It says to add around 100 mils of water, mix it and then leave it to stand for a minute or so. But yeah, I mean, now that's looking a lot more like muesli. That's actually not bad. <laughs> I'm quite impressed by that. There is like a slightly noticeable difference between that and real milk. Then the mains for menu two, obviously the chili con carne, which we opened for the portion sizes section. Not the best visuals, but it's quite hard to make a nice looking chili anyway, so it's more about the taste. It's not spicy, pretty well seasoned. And then menu two also has a rajma masala. The longer I leave this one, I think this is the first one that has actually like a bit of heat to it, but not unpleasant at all, just like a nice, a nice warmth there. This hits close to home, spaghetti with beef and sauce. Oh, and it even came with Italian bread sticks. What do we think? It's not meatballs. They had meatballs. We only have meat sauce. Bread sticks. They're a bit dry. They're the most driest thing I've ever eaten. These are so dry. It's white chicken chunks. Oh no, it's just, oh God. Yeah, just canned white chicken. No, I'd, I'd be so bummed. Yeah, this is the worst one. So we got a beef taco filling with Santa Fe rice. Um, not horrible. Decent seasoning, but yeah. I think what's missing for all these is cheese. Then we're on to menu three and we have our first duplicate item. It's another muesli for breakfast. Now this one I'm intrigued by. One of the main options in menu three, steak and vegetables with dumplings. A classic British beef stew is kind of one of my favorite foods. Having said that, I've opened this and it looks and smells like cat food. Now I've been eating most of these straight out of the bag because they've had a kind of texture which permits that, but this one I think we're gonna have to plate up. This uh, apparently is steak and vegetables with dumplings. Now I started this section by saying that all of these can be eaten hot or cold, and I do think that's true. I guess the question is whether or not all of them should be eaten hot or cold. And I think this one, just immediately from the look of it, I think probably needs to be heated up because we've had our uh, our first womp womp moment of the episode. God. That's not good. Beef strips in a savory tomato sauce. Marinara sauce with meatballs. Wait, so there's no noodles? Just sauce and meatballs? Oh my goodness, look how little these meatballs are. Look at these little guys. There's no, there's no pasta in there, just the meatballs. Yeah, ooh, spaghetti -o level of meat flavor. Beef stew. No, at least this one has noodles. And this one came with a breakfast. That was grape jelly. We're gonna jump ahead slightly to menu eight because that's where I've taken our hot main from. And the alarm has just gone off, which means it's ready to eat. Once it's cooked, just tear it along here. And then it's at the perfect height that you can then just also tear this and eat the whole thing. It's changed the consistency of this a little bit. I think with the steak and vegetables, for example, I think that would change the consistency a lot. Whereas this has just made it like a little bit more runny, but not too bad. It was very hot, but that's still really good. I think this one I do prefer heated up actually. It brings out a few more of the flavors, a little bit more depth of flavor to it. That's really good. And I'm so impressed with this like heating pad thing. The, uh, the heating pad, as well as just, I guess, warmed up meals, thumbs up for me so far. Macaroni and a beef sauce. Well, that's good. We got noodles and the chili. Oh, that's terrible. It doesn't taste like anything. Vegetarian taco pasta, which is a vegetable crumble with pasta and taco style sauce. Is this supposed to be zapple sauce? Who doesn't love a little apple sauce? Again, wow, super sweet. With sugar, not high fructose corn syrup, that's a plus. And the last item from menu three is a beef burrito style filling with rice. Sadly, this does not come with any tortillas, so you can't make an actual burrito with it. There's a little bit more spice than anything else that I've had so far. The texture of the rice would be improved by heating this one up, because the rice is still like a little bit al dente. Elbow macaroni and tomato sauce. Granted, I mean, I know I gotta heat them up. Yeah, this one's all right. Uh, mango, peach, applesauce. I'm liking the applesauce. This would be considered, I guess, a breakfast, or 
It's fruity, so maybe let's see what we have first thing in the day. Oh yeah, oh this is really good. Next up we've got menu four and we're starting with an all day breakfast. Apparently it differs from the sausage and beans because this contains some omelette as well as some bacon pieces. I think my only criticism of this is that the sauce that they put the beans in is like exceptionally sweet. Carrying on through menu four, we have a pasta bolognese main. I have a similar concern to the meatballs and pasta. I think that is like roughly the color that you want your bolognese sauce to look like. I think when I looked at this one, I was expecting worse. Again, like the vibe I'm getting, particularly from the pasta dishes, is very much like tinned pasta vibe, like a tinned bolognese. And the last menu four item is a chicken curry with potatoes and rice. There's actual like decent sized pieces of what I hope is chicken, less flavorful than some of the other ones. I want to try heating some of these up. You do this, then you put your MRE inside. Sorry, you can't tell red and water to this. There we go. Real exciting stuff here in the studio. While we're moving on, so we got one, two, three heating up. The staff was able to make this thing work. I was not, I don't know why. But moving on, we have a cheese tortellini and a tomato sauce. Oh yeah, look at this, I got the whole, the whole tortellini right there. Then we're on to menu five, and we're starting off with another muesli. It's the third muesli we've had in five meals. The variation, I think, is gonna to start to kind of run dry. Speaking of a lack of variation, meal five also has another pasta bolognese. The different option from meal five is a sweet and sour chicken with rice. Good color on it. Nice, uh, familiar orange color. There's pineapple in this, and water chestnuts. I'm kind of impressed. This is pretty good. I'd say this leans more on the balance of sweet rather than sweet and sour. I think with the water chestnut and also the kind of like pineapple chunks, there's still some things in there with bite, which I appreciate. Creamy spinach fettuccine with egg noodles, spinach, and mushroom in a cream sauce. Oh. It feels like they're going a little, I don't say overboard, because I figure you gotta have like a variety of meals, but doesn't like a fettuccine with mushrooms in a cream sauce like, after a long day of hauling stuff around and soldiering and this exhausting job and carrying all the stuff and just be like, ah, let's kick back with some spinach mushrooms and a cream sauce, like the, the most colorful one so far. I don't feel great. <laughs> I do not feel good. Next up is menu six, which we've actually covered all of already. Starts with an all day breakfast, which I've had, then moves on to a, another pasta bolognese, which I've also had, and finishes with my old friend, steak vegetables with dumplings, which I will absolutely not be trying again. This should be the Mexican style chicken stew. Oh, and then they're saying there's another tear here to remove the MRE. Very smart. So you got a second spot to tear. This is really smart. Second spot to tear. So it's easier just to grab the MRE out. All right, so the package is hot. So it feels like this is much, like has smooshed it around a little bit. So they are, Still flimsy tortillas, but looks like they're chipotle flavored. Not as gelatinous, I guess. Definitely better heated up. <laughs> yeah, I like this. This is pretty good. Next up is menu seven, which I don't know if this was deliberate or not, but appears to be like a fully vegetarian menu. For starters, we have a vegetarian all day breakfast. I think the main difference is that they've subbed out the meat sausages for vegetarian sausages. It's another one that seems to be like mostly beans. It seems very fitting that the British army is powered by baked beans. Makes you proud to be British. It's got the same issue as before that the beans are just like, I think too sweet. One of the main course options in menu seven is the rajma masala with rice, which I've again also had. But one that I have not had is a vegetable and chickpea biryani. I like a biryani. For those who don't know, it's just like various things, sometimes meat, in this case vegetables, cooked down with rice and a bunch of Indian spices. I've had much better biryani in the past. I'm sure there are lots of people watching at home and recoiling in horror at the thought of this being a biryani, but it's okay. And I think on the whole, the vegetarian menu, pretty good. Moving on, we have the chicken burrito bowl, which comes in a bag and not a bowl. Sure, a lot of this just like, I know, we got some heated up, so you can see the difference when it's not heated up. It's just this weird gel cube. And that comes with what essentially would be considered a breakfast, I guess, apple pieces and a spiced sauce. So the entree appears to be a maple flavored pork sausage patty. Okay, so just one block of yep. <laughs> ah, it is of course just this. It's like a uh, cliff bar, but pork, not good, really weird. It tastes uh, surprisingly bland. A hash brown potato with bacon, pepper, and onions. Ooh, no, this is the most cat foodie looking. 
Menu eight is another duplicate one. We start with another all day breakfast. Then there's another chili con carne, which I've actually already heaten up and eaten. And we have another beef burrito style filling with rice. I cooked beef ravioli once again. It like heated the bottom of it. <laughs> so you still gotta kinda, still gotta massage it a little bit. Like this, this side is heated and then this middle part didn't get heated. It also came with tortillas, which is funny. This is what this looks like and it looks gross. Menu nine starts with more muesli. Then moves to a new dish, which is sausage casserole. This is another like classic British dish, a sausage casserole. Slow cooked, stewed sausages with tomato, potatoes, other vegetables. On the whole, the sausages have actually been like surprisingly good. It might just be because I quite like those slightly cheap, like pre-packaged sausages. And then for your other main course, we have another pindi chana alu. This one, another hot one. Oh, it's just, so it's just gonna be a patty? <laughs> oh! It has a sauce, apparently. It's grilled jalapeno pepper jack, flavored. Comes with au gratin potatoes. Au gratin potatoes? What do you think of that? This looks really rough. Italian sausage with peppers, onions, and a marinara sauce. Yeah, okay. Menu number 21 should be lemon pepper tuna, or tuna chunks in a bag. We've just been informed that this bag actually says white chicken chunks, which we saw before. There is a lemon pepper tuna that we don't have. And finally, last but not least, we have menu 10, which starts with an instant porridge. The cooking instructions actually specify that you need to put boiling water in it, leave it for three minutes to soak, and then eat it. Whereas all the other ones are technically able to be eaten cold. Menu 10 has a couple of mains, one of which is another beef burrito style filling with rice. And our final main course is Hunter's Chicken. It's another, it's another plate one, uh, which I don't think is a compliment. Doesn't look great, does it? Um, this is Hunter's chicken. Traditionally, this is chicken breast with some bacon, some cheese, some barbecue sauce. I think bits of chicken in here, although I'm kind of struggling to see where. <laughs> I think it's these like small bits rather than like a chicken breast. No, that's really bad. <laughs> Beef goulash. Beef with brown rice, spinach, carrots, tomatoes, and smoked paprika. A pepperoni pizza and cheese slice. Mm. Army pizza. Oh, God. That's so bad. This has been brutal. I don't know what it is about this food. Like, yeah, some things tasted bad, but most things just, just tasted okay. But I have a headache, and my stomach doesn't feel good. I noticed there's a lot of sodium in these, so that might have something to do with it. Tortillas came with this one, the Southwest style beef and black beans with sauce. Again, there are very few breakfasts, but this one is Mixed fruit, which appears to be, there's some chunks in there, so you got a bag of mixed fruit. On top of the mains and breakfast options, you also get a dessert in a British ration pack. The options we got today included a chocolate brownie, a cinnamon cake, a vanilla cake, a chocolate cake, or an orange cake. The US MREs have an assortment of desserts, which looks all right. Muffin tops, cookies, puddings, cakes, a bun, a toaster, pastry cookies and cobblers. I'll try a couple of these. I want to try the brownie because it's packaged differently to the others and because I like brownie. It looks a little bit more cakey than brownie-ish, but uh, we'll see. No, that's so dry. Starting down here, get a maple muffin top or a chocolate banana nut muffin top. Uh, three different types of cookies. You get a oatmeal chocolate chip cookie, Chocolate chip cookie, an oatmeal cookie, that's funny. <laughs> and actually, now I think about it, we've got patriotic sugar cookies, could be in the cookie category. The packaging was different, so I separated them, but I'm curious what a patriotic sugar cookie looks like. Oh, no, nothing. These look like broken up Girl Scout cookies. Is that a rocket? What is that? I don't even know what that is. Do you know what that is? Oh, like, oh my God, turn it around. Turn it upside down. Ah, it's the Liberty Torch. Oh, it's a bunch of different ones, but they're all broken up. Oh, oh well, these are pretty good. Then I wanted to try one of the cake options. It's actually probably the cinnamon that appeals to me the most, so. I mean, this looks better. It could be, again, slightly more moist, but it's got a pretty nice texture to it. There's definitely a cinnamon flavor there. In terms of like shelf stable baked goods, this is a much better effort than the brownie was. This is actually like perfectly edible. I have an assortment of pound cakes, applesauce pound cake, lemon poppy seed pound cake, vanilla pound cake, Marble pound cake. Uh, cinnamon bun. And a toaster pastry that just feels completely destroyed in here, so. I don't know what toaster you're using out in the field, but all right. And last, this 
package that looks like all the other ones is a cherry blueberry cobbler. Uh, I think this is be fine. Oh, uh, that's colorful. It just looks like a whole thing like jelly. Every ration pack in the UK also comes with four to five snack options. We've taken all the ones we got from menus one to 10 and laid them out here. Snacks. Our US MREs come with a lot of snacks. Usually find three or four of these in each MRE and various combinations. So here we have a mixed fruit snack, which is like a fruit puree in one of these handy little pouches. First of all, I mean, how bright do these look just compared to all the packages we've been dealing with this whole video? Like I'm looking at these, I'm, I'm also gonna like turn the saturation oh. down. Peppermint candy rings, and then you got M&Ms, Twizzler nibs, more M&Ms, Skittles, Skittles, Reese's Pieces. Very nice, thank you. There are a few different peanut options on the menus in the UK starting with barbecue peanuts, some chili peanuts, and the classic salted peanuts. Dried fruit, dried cranberries, raisins, and a trail mix that has uh, a nut raisin mix for the trail. Here we have cheddar cheese flavor spread. In the UK, if you're having cheese, you have like cheese and crackers. So I feel like maybe this is supposed to be enjoyed with some of these crackers down this end. Down here, three different types of energy bars you can get. I've never heard of the brand First Strike. Not sure if that is a brand that exists outside the military, but you can get an apple cinnamon, chocolate, or cran raspberry energy bar. Oh, geez, look at this thing. Not a bunch of junk. <laughs> it tastes okay. Next, we have a fruit flapjack. Flapjack in the UK is a mixture of oats, syrup, butter, and often raisins, which are kind of like packed together to make a nice nutritious sweet treat. This is an oatmeal block. I'm not really sure what this is. I'm actually gonna open this one just out of curiosity more than anything. Looks like a sort of shortbread biscuit on the outside. Yeah, somewhere between like a digestive biscuit and like a rusk, which for the uninitiated, is like, I think, an oaty biscuit that's basically made for babies. I feel like I used to steal rusks from my baby sister when she was little. Sorry, Annie. Trail mix granola nuts, you got it. Um, packages of either dry roasted nuts. Man, they really suck this thing dry, look at that. Same with this one, the uh, smoked almonds and jalapeno cashews. Recovery trail mix with pretzels, granola, and this trail mix that has Beef jerky in it. Want to mainline your jerky? US government has you covered. Beef sticks. Here we have a sachet of peanut butter. We have three different types of jam that we found. We have apricot, we have plum, and we have strawberry jam. This is an exotic fruits nougat bar. Here we have a sesame bar, which is basically just sesame seeds held together with melted sugar. Apricot oat biscuits, a tropical fruit and nut mix, as well as just nuts and just fruit. Cheese-filled cracker, pepperoni flavor, uh, cheese-filled pretzel, cheddar flavor, pretzel nuggets, barbecue corn nuggets, barbecue flavored corn kernels, so like uh, corn nuts, right? Bake snack crackers, cheddar flavor, and uh, protein puffs, ring-shaped barbecue. I feel like if you get these ones, you've done quite well. These sound fancy. We have chocolate orange mini cookies and coconut biscuit bites. They sound like a more gourmet approach to uh, a ration pack snack. And to the breads and spreads, we'll call it. Multigrain bread. White wheat snack bread. Wheat snack bread. I mean, how good are the shots we have to get of these? Everything looks the same. And then this one, Italian bread, blah, blah, blah. Got it, okay, great. You have a vegetable cracker or a regular cracker. What do you want to put on those breads or crackers? You got chunky peanut butter, peanut butter, chocolate peanut spread, cheese spread. Cheese spread with jalapenos. Cheese spread with bacon. Here we have cheese and oat biscuits which I think are probably designed, like I say, to be eaten with the cheesy spread. Next up are biscuit browns. I wasn't sure what a biscuit brown was, and after tasting it, I'm still kind of equally unsure. It's like a sort of bran, like wheaty cracker type thing. For the fruit, you got apple jelly, strawberry jam, and I know there's a grape jelly from earlier. I don't know where it went, but it looks exactly like this package. <laughs> and finally, we have a cookies and cream bar. That's not what I was expecting at all. When you hear cookies and cream, I'm right in thinking that you expect Oreo, right? Whereas this is more like a, like a Rice Krispie type of treat. Doesn't smell of Oreo at all. It literally smells of like, like a Rice Krispie treat, maybe dark chocolate. Doesn't taste great either. The US MREs have an assortment of different drinks, both, I guess, regular temperature and warm. So the first thing I wanna do before I get into that is point out that we have four different, in the middle here, 
coffee drinks, hot drinks you wanna, as you have it. This is a French vanilla cappuccino. Mm -hmm. And I wanna make it real quick. And we saw how we heated up the drinks before, so. Here also comes with a hot beverage bag. Pre-added the water, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put powder in here. Ay. This looks all right. Mix it up a little bit. Have me cappuccino. It smells like when the VCR gets really hot. You watch like three movies in a row. Now we're on to the drink options, which again, I think you get four of in a 24 hour British ration pack. These all come in the form of powders, which you mix with water and then consume. They're also split into four different categories. We have just a standard drink powder. We have an energy drink powder, a fortified energy drink powder, and we have an isotonic drink powder. Having quickly scanned the ingredients of both of these, I'm actually not sure what the difference is between say an energy drink powder and a standard fruit flavor powder. There's no caffeine in the energy powders, for example. I think most of the energy is coming from the sugar content in these. While that's cooking, let's see what other drinks we have. We got orange, lemon, lime, and grape. That's definitely not grape colored. It says grape on here. I think it tastes like grape, but also because it's blue, I'm thinking blue raspberry. While my coffee is cooking, we also have different coffee flavors. I get a chocolate hazelnut protein drink, Irish cream cappuccino, chocolate protein drink. Regardless of the type of drink powder that you're getting, they do come in a bunch of different flavor options. I'm not sure if any of these particularly appeal to me. I'll try the tutti frutti one. I feel like of all of these, it sounds pretty fun. Yeah, I was really hoping that the color would be like a bright blue or pink or something. But just normal. It's unlocking some kind of like repressed alcohol memory, I think. I'm fairly sure I've drunk a, a cocktail to the point of oblivion that tasted pretty much like this. So this is my French vanilla coffee. Oh yeah, I'm not recognizing a lot of these words. But uh, yeah, this is nice. And the last thing we have here are beverage-based powders. Uh, so these had electrolytes in them. It's like energy drinks almost. And then these I think are just, uh, these have lots of sugar. So we have lemon lime, orange, and tropical punch. And then this little stick, beverage base orange type three. Finally, every ration pack in the UK also contains a bag of common items. We start down this end where we have some matches. Then we have some water purification tablets. I think there are six of these in here actually. And according to this, you can purify a liter of water per tablet. That's pretty good. I like that this is in the essential items thing. We have some hot sauce. We have some tissues, as well as two alcohol-free hand wipes. Then you have two tea bags, two sachets of instant coffee, four sachets of beverage whitener. I think, again, this might be something along the lines of they can't legally call this powdered milk, but it is effectively a powdered milk substitute. And four sachets of sugar. Our US MREs have these following accessories. First of all, over here, you've seen it a few times this episode, the heating thing, the heating bags to heat up your food and your drinks. Saw this the whole time, the spoon. Every MRE comes with a spoon. Now, did you notice I had a difficult time kind of cutting into some stuff and I thought, why don't they have anything like a knife in here? Of course they have a knife, they're soldiers, they have pocket knives. Uh, they come with a um, concentrated beverage base. This one is cranberry grape. Over here is the coffee zone for the most part. Bill's brewed freeze dried coffee. You can do that to hot or cold water. Six ounces right here. And you have your choice of either Splenda or sugar. Salt, if you need more sodium on your food. This is a coffee creamer. Each pack of accessory comes with two pieces of gum. These are waterproof matches. Spice up that food a little bit, a little bit of Tabasco. Little Tabasco guy, look at this little guy. All right. A moist toilet and regular napkins. In the US, MREs were first introduced in the 1980s and were designed to be lightweight, portable, and self-contained meals that didn't require cooking or refrigeration. They were also intended to provide the necessary nutrition for soldiers in the field. Early iterations of British ration packs actually used cans. It wasn't until the 1990s that these were replaced with pouches. Each MRE typically contains around 1,200 to 1,300 calories with balanced nutrition essential to supporting the demands placed on soldiers during military operations. Each MRE is said to have approximately 170 grams of carbohydrates, 45 grams of protein, and 50 grams of fat. 
As we've said, a British ration pack is usually designed for 24 hours worth of nutrition, whereas it seems as if the American ones are not. We can assume this because the average nutritional value of an entire British ration pack is somewhere between 3,800 and 4,200 calories. Now here's a chili meal from before. We're gonna go through its specific nutrition. Now I wanna point out that the bag didn't have anything on it, so I am learning about the nutrition of these in real time. The chili with the beans, one serving size, all this is 260 calories. And this single serving of cornbread with your chili, also 260 calories. Your vegetable cracker is gonna be 170 calories, and your cheesy spread is 120 calories. Then the cheese-filled crackers, the pepperoni pizza flavor, 240 calories for this one. And if you're gonna be sipping on your lemon-lime flavored non-fruit juice juice, that's gonna be 130 calories for the whole beverage a grand total of this many calories. We've selected some items which seem to match up roughly with what you'd expect to find in a US MRE. Here we have the chili con carne main, we've got some crackers with the cheese spread, some peanut butter, and a fruit flavored drink. The total calories for these items comes to 1,379. The FDA recommends that adults consume around 75 to 90 milligrams of vitamin C per day. Just two of these drink sachets is more than enough vitamin C for that intake. We are not getting scurvy anymore. We learned our lessons back in the Navy days. Although it's also worth noting the amount of sugar that is in one of these. In a 45 gram sachet of mango and passion fruit drink, you will find 40.5 grams of sugar. That's 81% of your daily recommended intake just in one of these. Let's take a look at the ingredients of the chili con carne in the UK. Beef, red kidney beans, tomato puree, water, onion, red and green peppers, wheat flour, calcium carbonate, iron, thiamine and nicotinamide, modified maize starch, salt, spices, spice extracts, calcium carbonate and smoke flavor. The ingredients in here are actually all pretty natural without any real artificial preservatives. Our eyebrows were raised when we saw nicotinamide in the wheat flour. Thankfully, it's not some kind of nicotine, it's just another type of vitamin B3, aka niacin. This chili with beans contains all this. Uh, looks like mostly normal stuff until you get to the bottom of the list there. Ethoxylated monodiglycerides, I have no idea what that is. I don't think I've ever had that in Food Wars before, so uh, if someone in editing can go ahead and say what it's used for. These have a minimum shelf life of three years depending on storage conditions. Uh, the storage conditions for these MREs, I'm assuming were room temperature the whole time, so I'm feeling pretty confident that these are all uh, not expired. Similarly, ours have a shelf life of around three years, and after that, it's down to the temperature at which they're stored. For example, this chili was made in December 2021, and apparently is shelf stable until around 2025. And how can these meals have such a long shelf life, you ask? According to the USDA, MREs are shelf stable because they have been commercially sterilized by heat in a sealed container to destroy bacteria that can make it unsafe or spoil the food. Like food in metal cans, MREs can be kept for a long time, but not indefinitely. The shelf life of MREs and ration packs is pretty directly related to the temperature at which they're stored. The cooler the storage temperature, the longer they'll last. Rations in a desert temperature might only last a few months, whereas rations at room temperature or colder climates can be good up to five years. We're filming this towards the end of 2023, which means that our chili con carne, for example, is already around two years old. I've gotta say, I don't feel great after eating them. However, I do think that's probably more due to the quantity that I've eaten rather than due to the storage quality of these. Since 1981, the US menu has changed about five times, improving the quality and the taste. It also has expanded the menu variety and now includes vegetarian, kosher, and halal options. There also aren't many changes in the UK. However, there was a recent controversial change. Chocolate bars were taken away from British troops serving in Iraq and Afghanistan because they kept melting in the desert heat. They were replaced with the much less popular peanut butter. I can see how people would be annoyed about that. So you get five matches, as well as one of these little striking strips. I broke it, so. Oops, a daisy. <laughs> 